My name is Bob Packard. June 8th, I will be 79. I met a, a couple of climbers that on the top of uh, Humphrey Peak in Arizona, and they told me about the 50 peaks and uh, that it was a club, and they were trying to do that. And shortly after that, I I made it as a goal. Well, there are 50 states, and so I'm trying to climb uh, the highest peak in each of those 50 states. But my dad uh, decided after we finished, after I finished camp and he picked me up, we as a family were going to go up Katahdin. So we went up Katahdin. So that was my first of the 50 peaks that, that I did. <laughs> with him. Really young. Young. Yeah, he sure. and I have done all kinds of mountains since then, but as part of our training for the the trip that we took out to Utah or New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, before that trip as part of our training, we did Mount Washington. He was pretty much dragging all the way up because he just didn't eat and drink enough, but we made it all the way to the top. And uh, I was like, you know, they have this, uh, this train that will take us down to the bottom. We could do that instead of hiking back down. And he's like, yeah, there, there's nothing in this 50 peak bagging that uh, says you have to go back down. You have to go up. <laughs> Several of them, you can drive right to the peak. My, my name's uh, Noah Packard, um, Bob Packard's son or grandson. When I first started hiking um, with uh, Grandpa Bob, uh, we we went to um, Mount Mansfield in Vermont. Um, he's done 46 of them so far. I've only climbed uh, six mountains with him. Um, each of the mountains was the tallest mountain in that state. I actually saw the book. He actually was writing in it, in the like the cover inside cover of the book, what dates he did each peak that he could remember. And so if he could remember the peaks and what date it was, he it counted. If he couldn't remember it, then he'd have to go back do it again. And because my mom wanted to go out and visit her family, she was going out and doing that. So this is all, I, I think I might've even been 40 years old. Like, so this was, that's when he started all this. But these last few, he's have left some of the hardest ones for last. And they're, they're tough peaks. So he's got Rainier, he's got Hood, and he's got the uh, peak in um, Wyoming, or I think, and then the one that we were supposed to go to that we never went to. So he's got four peaks. I think Denali in particular was an exceptional experience. The three of us were all roughly the same age, uh, recent graduates of, of college. Two of us were from Middlebury College and one of us was from uh, Yale. And when we discovered that we couldn't get a permit to climb, we decided to go anyway, so we just had to find a way to get <laughs> to the park and secretly go climb this big mountain. We actually got on the railroad anchorage to Fairbanks, and we took a sightseer shuttle, you know, that they took us out to the Isleson Visitor Center. Well, we pretended to be photographers. One of the guys had a lot of photography uh, equipment. So when we got off the bus, nobody paid too much attention. And we simply hiked off across the tundra with all our camera gear. And uh, we proceeded from there. Try it sometime. Just, just put a month on your back and see what it weighs. <laughs> So we actually climbed the mountain without permission. The hardest thing was the first peak we did in New Mexico because we drove all the way nonstop without any sleep, really. I mean, nodding off a little bit in the passenger seat while the other person's driving. But we were both wiped out before we started the hike. And we still went all the way to the top <laughs> and then made it all the way right down because they didn't have any train to take down. Uh, so that was that was the most impressed I've ever been with my conditioning. The next hike I went on him with uh, with him was uh, Wheeler Peak. Yeah, it was my first time in New Mexico. I had never been there before. The two hikes before that were in 2018. Uh, Wheeler Peak was in 2019. We went to uh, Kings Peak in Utah. On the Utah 
uh, King's Peak hike, uh, we saw a moose, uh, two moose together. The moose that we saw, um, it was amazing to uh, be able to get that close. Uh, you know, I had never seen a moose before, so to see two mooses uh, together <laughs> was pretty cool. <laughs> After King's Peak, uh, we went to um, Idaho and uh, we climbed Bora Peak. Yeah, there was actual rock climbing um, at Bora Peak, like um, towards the top of the mountain. There were rocks falling uh, all over the place. Then the last peak, the I didn't make it up to the top, but you know, more the the more I think back on that, I don't regret not going up to the top of that because I just I'm not comfortable on those knife edges with with falling rock and you know steep fall off on either side. I just not, and that's why I'm not going on hood this summer. He's I think he's crazy. There wasn't really much to hold on to at all because the tree line was uh, relatively low. There is even ice at the top, which made it even that much more challenging. At one point on Denali, I, uh, I had got up into what appeared to be just a little place out of the wind, you know, and it was going vertically up and down instead of horizontally across. So I went over there and uh, I was no longer roped and I took all my heavy stuff off and let down my britches and about that time I just disappeared. I fell down this crevasse without a sound, without any feeling of motion and after a while I realized I wasn't falling anymore, but I never had a sensation of stopping. And I remember thinking, I, I can't be still falling. <laughs> I would be in the middle of the earth if I was. And I flailed around with my hands and I broke through the, the snow that I was buried in, the soft powder. And then I could see that I was maybe 60, 80 feet down in the, into this crevasse and that I had simply lodged there very slowly because I and all the snow went down at the same time and it kept getting narrower and narrower until I didn't fall anymore but I didn't hit anything. It didn't, didn't come to a sudden stop. I've never forgotten that. <laughs> and I now, every time I am on a glacier, I look for vertical <laughs> crevasses as well as horizontal ones. They, uh, the other two, uh, one of them stuck their head over and said, are you all right? And I said, yes. And they said, well, stay right there. We're trying to figure out how we're going to rescue you. And so I waited for a while and I got tired of it and I climbed out by myself. I think he's stubborn enough to do any hike. I think he could do McKinley right now. So for somebody from the East Coast to travel west by car, it, it's completely changes your perception of the whole entire United States. And uh, I've had some really amazing trips to these mountains and uh, I'm excited to uh, try to climb some more of them. After I'm through all 50 peaks, I plan to do the Appalachian Trail and I'm going to use kind of the same part of the same strategy where I'll probably do it one state at a time. I, I think it's a good uh, metaphor for life in general, but um, it's particularly fun because you get to know your other family members and, and grandchildren in particular in ways that you don't typically interact with them. When you're on a hike and you're carrying a heavy load or you're having to cook a meal and set up camp or, or it's pouring rain and you're trying to stay dry. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a very different experience than uh, when you're back, you know, in the security of, of a home somewhere. Not only is it much safer than you might think, but it's, it's much more fun than you might think. On top of all of that, it's good for you. <laughs> the peak bagging is important for bragging rights but if you're a normal citizen that isn't built like that and it doesn't like seeing 4,000 foot drops on either side just go visit the national parks visit as many national parks as you can and that will get you an appreciation for the U.S. that that nobody else really has it, it's it's had a profound impact on my whole life like 
loving travel, loving seeing cool places. But the U.S. has enough national parks to blow your mind. 